Hello my loves. Right, I'm going to do a nice design on my practice hand today. Um, it's going to be featured around our May Bling Box crystal pack, which is called Mermaid's Tail, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I've already applied the TX Elite coffin tips to my practice hand, just, you know, so it's nice and easy. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply a thin, clear layer to each nail. And this is just because... Um, I would do this on a client anyway to protect them from coloured acrylic but also when I work with um, practice tips on a silicon hand with plastic tips in it I just feel like it gives me a little bit of extra strength for that aggressive filing that's coming up later on. Um, as you know the May Bing the May Bling Box is live on the website and it is almost sold out unfortunately. Um, there's a chance we might be able to get some more um, made available but you never know so don't bank on it if you're going to get it get it fast. Uh, the crystal mix and glitter mix will be available independently as is the wax melt from the box so you can get them independently you just save money if you get the, the whole shebang um, and that's about it really the theme it's out the bag now it's out the bag because most of you have got your boxes it is based on mermaids under the sea and all that blingy jazz and we've also got some little gold seashell charms that are going live on the website as well today so that's very very exciting um, I'm going to go straight in and start the most complicated nail. Um, I'm doing a swooshy smile line now. In hindsight, I think this could have got away with being a bit longer, a bit further down the nail. So it's not a full coverage smile line, it's like a half swoosh. I haven't done one of these for an incredibly long time and I just fancied it, but I do wish it was a bit longer because th this is a very, very, very long nail. And I think maybe, maybe it wouldn't have looked any better. Maybe it would have though. So I'm gonna do my base layer and just start building that wall as you can see with the brush, just dragging it along, smoothing out that surface. And when it's in place and everywhere is where it needs to be, I kind of just brush, brush, brush with my damp brush and it just keeps it nice and smooth. Then I'm just gonna apply my second one, which is kind of incorporating what will be the apex. And it just gives that wall a little bit more strength, evens out that section. We're going to file into it later. So if it's too big, don't worry. But if it's too small, you might have a problem. We're going to leave that to set and now glow in with this gorgeous glitter called Mermaid's Kiss, which was named by the lovely Mimi. As you can see, look how beautiful that is. I'm obsessed with this glitter. So I'm laying a base coat of coloured acrylic down and I can't remember what colour it is. It's from Glitter Planet, but I can't, I can't for the life of me remember, and I haven't got the pots with me right now, so I will try and remember to put it in the description box. But I'm just doing a wash of that at the bottom, and then I'm going to pick up a clear bead of acrylic and a blob of this gorgeous glitter, and we're going to do an ombre, so the tip of the nail will have the most glitter, and then as it goes back towards the cuticle, the glitter thins out. Now this nail, I did it a weird way, um, because it's been so long, since I've done this and I just I don't know why I did it back to front but I did but it, it worked and I just you know there you go sometimes you just got to go with the flow eh so I'm filling up this bit down here with the glitter first and foremost and then feathering it towards the cuticle and if you've got little gaps just tap in some raw glitter it works perfectly well like that tap 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 nice and easy that's the beauty of glitter like this it's just designed for optimum coverage I'm going to let that set and while that's just drying out I'm going to do a full uh, nail of nude and this nude is Valentino um, I want to say precious pink I think that's what it's called and I, I wish I hadn't used it I wish I'd used um, toasted rose from glitter planet but I didn't have any left and I can't I still can't find I know I bought another pot months ago and I cannot find it so I just went for this and it's too wishy-washy for this design and I think it just there's something missing because of that tone it's too pinky too wishy-washy but never mind it is what it is it's been done and I certainly wasn't going to do this whole set again so I'll let you watch me just do this whole nail. I've broken it down into its three main beads and then I added an extra bead just into the center there for structure. But yeah, I'll let you have a look. You can sit back and chill while I apply this. Thank you. 
onto that teeny tiny pinky nail and I'm pretty sure this is like peacock green or peacock from Glitter Planet. Um, I'm applying that to the whole of the little finger. We're going to build up all the coverage with that but you don't need a lot so you can work quite thin on it because we're going to do a glitter ombre on this nail and I like having a solid background colour behind the glitter it just helps it pop even more so we'll add a little cuticle bead there bosh always using the tip of that brush to tuck it in okay now I've got to leave that to dry as well so while that's setting up I'll move on to the next nail so I'm going back to the index finger and I'm going to do an ombre and this is where I did things a bit back to front because I also wanted to do a netting design over the glitter which I should have really done before the ombre but I was just in my zone and just completely forgot what I was doing basically and just went with the ombre straight off so I do this a bit backwards I do an ombre over the glitter then I cap it in clear and do netting and then cap it again no then I apply glitter and then cap it again so yeah you'll see what I mean it's it's a bit back to front but it, it actually looks fine so <laughs> there you go a little bit of an experiment going on today tucking in those sizes ago it's really easy when you're doing designs like this for the kind of shape to run away with you and before you know it you've got maximum bulkage to try and file down later on and that's not a big deal if you're okay with an e-file but if you're hand filing it's, it's going to annoy you I'm sorry about the noise big bus going past outside so tucking in the cuticle bead nice and easy get that in place lovely now obviously I'm going to need this nail to set up for a second let that ombre dry down but yes I, sh I should have done the netting first but never mind it's no biggie it's all good so now it's set up I'm going to cap it in clear but I'm only doing a thin layer because I want to do some netting I feel like I haven't done netting for ages and I love working with netting I, I absolutely love it it's so much fun to work with so I'm going to encapsulate the glitter like I said, it doesn't need to be super thick, but just enough to get that pattern imprinted into it. And then I'm going to take my little bit of netting and I'm going to pop it into my clear acrylic just to give it a coating to stop it sticking. And then I found it quite hard putting it on a practice hand. It's way easier to do it on a person because they can push against it and give you a bit of resistance. I found this a bit tricky, so I took it off because I'd already done the bottom half and then I just did a bit more above it. That was a bit easier doing it that way. And give it a second just so it's not too sticky and soft and then I'm going to go in with the peacock green and this pink which is called bunny boiler I think. And where it mixes in with the green it makes a cool purple so it just looks awesome. I love, I love the combo. Works really well with the crystal mix so that's all good. There we go just add a little bit here and there really water it just let it sink in it will look a mess right now don't worry about it let it cure go back to that pinky we're going to do glitter ombre more glitter at the cuticle ombre and down to the tip of the nail so I'm using my glitter from available on the website or in the bling box we we'll just pop that in there beautiful And as you can see, I'm just kind of brushing it down the nail gently and playing with it almost so that you can tease little bits of the glitter further down the nail without too much bulk coming with it. You get a bit more control, I feel, when you work with raw glitter. There we go. If I need any more coverage, I'll just tap the raw glitter in, but it's, uh, it's pretty good. We just need to take a little bit further down the nail, and that's that. So I'll just grab myself a little bit, pop it where I need it, and then feather down a little bit more. Nice and simple. And because that colour layer underneath is nice and thin, it's not going to be bulky. Now that needs encapsulating, so once that glitter has set in place, then you can encapsulate. The rule with glitter is if it ain't matte, it ain't capped. 
So your glitter needs to turn matte. You see the colour changing as that clear goes over it? That's what you want. That lets you know that it's all safe and encapsulated. That's what you need to achieve. So I'll let you watch this bit. Going back to the index finger now, and we need to just quickly file down this using a hand file because it's nice and soft. Just need to get down to that design that's going to come through with the netting. So this is the part where you kind of see what's underneath and pray that it's all worked. <laughs> Sometimes you just it just doesn't work, and it's all to do with the setting time of the clear, the temperature. Um, moisture in the air all those sorts of things so if it's a really really hot day that clear is going to start setting quick so you need to get your netting in but equally if it's a cold day and you put the netting on too soon you are just going to work this is just going to be sloppy i was struggling with the nail in the hand so i took it out in the end just found it easier to be a bit more aggressive with my filing technique <laughs> so she's filed as you can see look but i'm also going to go in and do a little glitter swoosh more glitter why not? More is more. Lil swoosh. And that's basically to incorporate where the netting then goes into the ombre because I did it back to front. That's all I'm doing. So if you've got a problem, just chuck glitter at it. It'll be fine. Just a little bit of glitter. It's all forgiven. That's the mantra. There we are. We'll just tease that around with the brush until we've got a nice swoosh and then I'll encapsulate that with clear acrylic. So I need to file in this swoosh. I'm gonna hold the file right up against it. Just give it a file, sharpen it up a little bit. And then I will go in with the peacock green color and just follow the line of the swoosh really. Once you get the started, it's okay. But if, if the first one goes wrong, the rest of them will follow. So get the first one nice and neat and it will make life a lot easier. So I'm going to go with the peacock green. Now, confession time. Once I'd built up this swoosh, I did not file it. I just used my brush to smooth it into place. Um, I just didn't feel that I needed to file it, so I didn't. Um, but I did get a, the the colour was quite wet and sticky, and I did make a mess of it in the cuticle area. I was like, oh, it's going everywhere today. Um, I was probably holding a bit too much moisture in my brush. 
So as you can see, I'm working on that swoosh right from like thin layer, and then I'll just keep adding more product and building it up. That's the trickiest part if you're gonna do this, especially on a practice hand. I find it easier on a real person, much easier, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I'm gonna take it up, just making sure I clean up that little area there. Keep swooshing that brush. And then I'm just gonna build that up even more. It doesn't matter if it looks really messy. It doesn't matter if it goes over the initial lines from the nude. It doesn't matter because you're gonna file that back. What you want is it close, you want it tight. The one thing that I regret about this nail is, well, there's two actually. One is not making that nail bed longer. Um, and the second one is that I feel that the sides were a bit too wide on this tip and I should have adjusted it more before applying the product. Because once the product's on, you kind of lose sight of that and you get zoned in on your design. Um, but, you know, these are all things you pick up on the way. So I'm gonna let that set um, in place. And as you can see, constantly smoothing and smoothing with my brush. And I didn't need to file, which was great. And then I'll go in with that bunny boiler pink and just butt that straight up against it and do the same. And again, I didn't feel the need to file it into place. So I just went with the flow. On the bottom half of the nail, I'm actually going to do a marble. Now, it might have looked better if there was a bit of glitter on there first, but I didn't, so there you go. Um, I'm just incorporating the pink, uh, the bunny boiler pink, and the peacock green, or peacock blue, whichever it is. And just doing a marble throughout the whole bottom half of the nail. It is complete colour overload, and um, really garish, and I love it because of that. <laughs> I think it looks awesome. I really love the colour combo. But yeah, maybe a bit of white to break it up. Might even give it a whole different vibe. You could do all sorts, couldn't you? I just, as I'm looking back at it, I'm thinking of different variations now, which is awesome. We'll carry that through the nail. And then obviously, that, especially that design area, needs encapsulating and the structure needs to be built throughout the nail. I did get into filing off camera and then I thought, oh, well, I'll file this one on camera. If you are hand filing, it is doable, I'll show you, because this is, I'm using 180 grit and it, this acrylic's quite soft, it does file quite easily, but it all depends on the system that you're using. But I opted to switch to my e-file because, yeah, I, I, I had literally been to the osteopath that day and had work done on my neck, so I was not gonna, <laughs> I was not gonna start doing a whole shed load of uh, hand filing. And my Melody Susie, I've got the e-file and lamp two in one, and it was on a medium speed. It was it was munching through this with a medium bit as well. So yeah, we just 
got on with that and as you can see nice crisp lines looking really lovely really really happy with how that turned out i'm only really doing the bulk of the 3d work with all oh, 3d work um smile line work with the e-file the rest of it i'll file by hand because it's not too hard but this was like a lot of excess acrylic to get out of the way and i just thought i'd save myself from myself <laughs> and then i'll nip over to the hand file tighten up the shape even out the surface of the nail and all that shebang um, I ended up taking it off and doing it off camera because um, it took me a bit longer than expected to file because of my neck so here we are all filed and here's the beautiful crystal mix this is mermaid's tail I'm in love with it I think it's my favorite yet it was inspired by Amy Lloyd um, from Instagram and these little shells which are going to be available on the website hopefully today and I'm just going to do some little designs. I'm just going to have fun with the crystals. The colour scheme is wonderful. It's so much fun. If you've got the May box, you know that inside there are the most amazing mermaid decals and mermaid scale decals. They are stunning. The wax melt is CK1 type, so absolutely beautiful. Um, and you'll see the play on words with the wax melt as well, which is really funny. It's just a fantastic box. I think it's my favourite yet. And a lot of people have said that, that it's their favourite so far. Um, but wait till you see next month's. <sighs> going to be so good. I love it. So exciting. So we're just doing a little something on this nail. It, I just felt it needed a little something. On the middle nail, we're going to do a full swoosh. I'd, it'd be rude not to. You know a swoosh has got to be in there somewhere. So I'll let you watch me with this. Nice and simple. And then once I've applied the crystals... I like to go in with a little bit of builder gel here and there and just add some of those really annoying caviar beads. I know they are just so annoying to use, but they're so, so beautiful. So sit back, chill out, and I'll let you watch this bit. Okie dokie, it's time to shine. So let's get the top coat out. We're using Madame Glam's No Wipe Top Coat. It's the only top coat I use. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. So all the other nails are going to be No Wipe Top Coat in gloss and the middle nail is going to be Velvet Matte. Again, from Madame Glam. So gorgeous. Just brings the nails to life. This top coat, the gloss and the matte, are both a 30 second cure. And um, yeah, no tacky residue to deal with. Really good shine and it lasts, like when I was in the salon, my clients would be coming back, their nails would still be as shiny as new. So it lasts really, really well. Again, just using a detailer brush to go around the crystals as I always do, just to kind of ensure that everything is stuck in place. It gives it an extra seal 
from things like hair and fibres and moisture helps to protect and I will just check because I've got gloves on I'll just check the edges of the nail because top coat moves until it's set doesn't it it's a gel a thin gel so you just want to make sure you're not gathering any drips onto top coat on this nail here see what I just yeah not too happy with the shape of it but do you know what I needed to get this out to show you and I had literally been to the osteopath that day and I thought I shouldn't be doing this because I'm not on top form but you know what I did it <laughs> I didn't listen did I didn't listen to myself but it's still cute so I'm not I'm not too worried it's still really really cute I think um funnily enough although I love the bling nails like so gorgeous but when I do the top coat reveal the pinky is my favorite because of the glitter I just love it so so much it's incredibly beautiful yes so on the nail with the crystals when I top coat that one you have to be really careful not to go over the crystals with your top coat especially if you're using matte top coat but any top coat really you need to go around the crystals so I'm going to be careful, I'm going to use the bigger brush for as much of it as I can and then I'll switch over to a detailer brush if I get into any tight spots. So they went in for a cure and I want to do the final reveal. I chose different lighting, different setting, just to show you it in all different places. And I'm absolutely in love with them, as I am everything in that May box. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, here we are, slightly less lighting. Oh, so beautiful. I really, really hope you like this. Um, let me know, yeah. Let me know if you've got your box yet. Let me know if you love it and I'll see you in my next video. I'll leave all the links in the description box and discount codes and stuff. Tally bye!